thank you all for coming. So my name is Jerish, and I work as a technical marketing manager at Palo Alto Networks. So what I'm going to talk about here is specifically about performance testing next generation firewalls. Everybody knows about next generation firewall, why it was built, fundamentally to address the problem about safe enablement of application. Every major firewall IPS vendors are into the bandwagon of next generation firewalls. However, there's not much thought or not much discussion about how to test these next generation firewalls. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to sh share with you the experience, everything that I've learned, performance testing a next generation firewall and how it is different from performance testing a stateful firewall. The agenda for today is apples and oranges. That is a key word for the session. So I have three things to cover. Firstly, why is next generation firewall testing different from other flavors of firewall? What you need to know about testing next generation firewall. It does not specifically have to be testing a next generation firewall. Even when you're looking at the report or somebody says about performance of a next generation firewall, what are the things that you have to think? What are the questions that you should be asking to those reports to make sure that you understand that the performance of the next generation firewall is what you believe is true. And how we at Palo Alto Networks use the breaking point systems for sizing and measuring performance of our devices and how it benefits our engineering team as well as our customers. So let's take a look back about the history of performance testing. RFC 2544. This was the RFC written for benchmarking inner networking devices. It's primarily based on UDP. There are different types of UDP packets that the test tools will generate based on the RFC standards. Then you measure the throughput, the latency of the device under test. Keep in mind, this RFC was written in 1999. It's a 15-year-old RFC. It's now become the benchmark or the standard for performance testing, no matter what kind of device this is. So when you look at the history of the firewalls, or I would rather say the evolution of firewalls, it's gone through different cycles of changes to adapt to the changing security needs. We had packet filters, proxies, stateful firewalls, which was later on added to make it deep packet inspection firewalls, UTM devices, and finally, you have the next generation firewalls. All these products were designed to handle a specific or address a specific problem at their times. When you look at the packet filters, the classification is, or the filtering is based on port and protocol. Application proxies. So we needed the speed. So the proxies made way to stateful firewalls. The stateful firewalls gave you the speed but then you wanted to inspect some layer 7 contents, so there came in the DPI, the deep packet inspection firewalls, or the UTM devices. And then finally you have the need for the application control, the safe enablement of applications. So that is why we have the next generation firewalls. So when you look at the history, the type of traffic any of these devices sees on the network is very different. On a next generation firewall, it's purely application irrespective of the ports and protocols and safely enabling and securing those applications. However, there were some industry experts that realized or understood there was a requirement to change the test methodology or have another test methodology for stateful inspection devices. So that was the birth of RFC 3511. So this RFC, written in 2003, specifically talks about benchmarking stateful devices using HTTP traffic. UDP is simply packet blasting. There is no state. The firewall does not have to know the state. But with HTTP, you have to maintain the state. So that gave some more, some, somewhat a more realistic performance number. However, when you look at today's network, the traffic, the type of the traffic you see is very, very different. The snapshot that you see here on the screen is taken out of what we call as an application, application usage report that we got from our live customer networks. So when you look at this, 20% of the bandwidth or the 20% of the traffic out of the sample of 1,400 applications are internet utilities. And when you look at the threats, about the 5,000 applications, I'm sorry, there are about 5,000 threats, 
there's about 12 percent on the email and 37 of those threads are internet utilities so this is the current day's traffic that you see in a network if you're using a next generation firewall so it's no longer http only there's a mix of applications that's that goes on on the network when you look at the port numbers because everything about the state of Everything about the next generation firewall is being port agnostics and trying to identify and enable the application. 42% of the traffic uses either TCP port 80 and or 443. That's, that also constitutes 45% of your internet bandwidth in any organization. Everybody thinks port 80 is a killer port. That's a port that's going to be constantly used to hack, but it's only 42% of the traffic. There's about 32% of the traffic that does not use port 80 at all, and about 26% of the traffic that uses dynamic ports. That means they port hop. They don't have a fixed static port. Depending on which port is open on the firewall, these applications will use that port numbers to initiate the connection. So there is a widespread use of the ports on your network if you don't know about that. So which is scary when you think about it. So when you're benchmarking, so when you're actually benchmarking a next generation firewall, you have to take into consideration all of these things. However, when you look at the data sheets of most of the firewall vendors, they still use RFC 2544 UDP packet blasting. This does not reflect the true performance of what a next generation firewall will deliver when deployed in an actual production network. Some vendors have gone up to the extent of using HTTP traffic for testing their performance along with the UDP. So what we have seen, talking to a lot of the customers, when we benchmark the firewalls, help them size the firewalls when they buy Palo Alto Networks devices, we create, we use them the following guidelines. So what we need to know about testing a next generation firewall, use a mix of application. The application mix should be fine-tuned to the customer's target deployment. This, the reason I say this is because depending on where the firewall is deployed, on the internet edge or the data center, or in a university or a financial institution, the traffic or the application mix that you see is very, very different. So when, when you're the customer, you want to make a purchase of the next generation firewall, and when you want to measure the performance, make sure the performance is done using a mix of the applications. That is critical. Applications are no longer port specific. That means no matter what port the application is running on, you want to be able to detect that, safely enable, and process the traffic. So when you're measuring the performance of a next generation firewall, this is very critical. Application identification and classification must be enabled on all ports all the time. Enable the set of same policies that you would use in a production. A lot of the times you test with one security policy and say, okay, this is how the firewall behaves. And that is not what you see in a real life network. So increase the number of policy that mirrors your actual customer's deployment or what you think your existing firewall policies are, have maybe 50, maybe 100 policies depending on the size of the deployment. Applications on all port really means that threats can also be going through all the ports. So your threat prevention should be tied to the application. It is no longer port and protocol specific. So that is the beauty of the next generation firewall is basically application enablement and threat detection on all ports. SSL decryption is key. A lot of our customers decrypt the traffic to look for threats. So if your target deployment uses SSL traffic and you want to inspect the SSL traffic for threats, when you perform and test the next generation firewall, you have to enable SSL decryption. It's not that you have to decrypt 100% of the traffic, but you find the, person, find the traffic or the categories of the URLs that you want to be decrypted and enable SSL decryption on those specific set of rules. This is very critical. One size does not fit all. Every single firewall manufacturer or vendor gives out default profiles for threat prevention antivirus. So these defaults, most of the time, are fine-tuned to deliver the best performance, which is not really what you want to look for because you, want to, you don't want to compromise security for performance. So when you're evaluating a next generation firewall, you want to be able 
stay away from using the defaults. Create custom security profiles, custom threat prevention rules, custom threat prevention, I'm sorry, custom antivirus rules, and use those in your test topology. So depending on whether you're using defaults or non-defaults, the performance can vary. I've seen in this in my experience, depending on how you use the antivirus and the threat prevention profiles, the security processing and hence the performance will impact the device. Visibility is critical. If you think you want to take control of your network, you have to know what is going on in the network. What that really means is when you're benchmarking or testing a firewall device, next generation firewalls, enable logging. Logging also has some impact on performance depending on the type of the firewall that you use. So if you really want to get to a real life number, you have to make sure on a, next, um, on a next generation firewall, you want to be able to look at what traffic, what kind of application has been processed, and be able to correlate those logs. So logging is very, very important. How do we use? Having talked about the test methodology, I want to talk about experience of using the test methodology, uh, the test method that I discussed with a breaking point systems tool at our labs at Palo Alto Networks. And the benefit that we've seen that using breaking point system tool, it gives you the flexibility to generate applications which simulates the real life network. This is one device that gives you the flexibility of creating mix of applications and you can fine tune the application mix by changing the percentage of bandwidth each different types of applications can use. So hence you can scale the throughput and we also talked about threat prevention on applications, not port numbers. So breaking point or test generator gives you the flexibility not only generate the application mix traffic, but also generate malicious traffic so that at the same time while you're pushing application traffic, you can look at some of the malicious traffic. So the testing is not only limited IPv4, the breaking point test tool gives us the flexibility to do IPv6. Also the ability to test SSL VPN throughput. A lot of the customers, depending on the use case, if it is a financial customer, they want to look at the, uh, they want to measure the latency of processing each application under load. The breaking point test tool we have extensively used is not only to measure the performance, the catch rate, when I say the catch rate, the threat detection rate, but also the latency that the Palo Alto firewall or the DUT introduces when processing such kind of traffic. It also gives you the flexibility of measuring the connections per second. The connection setup rate is a critical factor when you're passing traffic. So a lot of the data sheets have a connections per second number, which is actually the TCP connection establishment. But when you're sending applications over those TCP connections, those numbers are very, very different. So the breaking point test tool gives us the ability to measure the application connection setup rate, which reflects the customer's real life network. In addition to this, it gives you the flexibility to generate various types of flood. So how well can the firewall cope up with some of the denial of service attacks while it is processing this application traffic? What it finally boils down to is what I've seen the benefit of using the breaking point tool and talking to our customers is we have been able to advise the customers and the customers are comfortable purchasing a next generation firewall because we're able to successfully recreate the traffic mix. If you're not going to, if you don't have the option of using the traffic mix provided by breaking point, we're actually taking the PCAPs from customer's network and replaying that onto the break, like using the breaking point tool, then add some additional traffic to stress the device under test. So using the breaking point tool, we're able to successfully demonstrate to customers how the Palo Alto Network's firewalls behaves under load and what are all the different performance variables when you turn on different features based on the traffic types. So in the end, the customer has a good idea of what next generation firewall performance is. It's just not simply UDP packet blasting or just HTTP throughput. This is based on real world application performance. Having said that, to summarize, the key takeaways is when looking at the firewall data sheet or the firewall performance measurement, it is not apples and oranges. Next generation firewall performance testing requires just more than UDP packet blasting. 
Application identification is the key. Application identification must be enabled on all the ports, all the times. Threat prevention should be enabled on all ports, all times. What that really means is threat prevention should be tied to the application, not to ports. Security policies must reflect the target deployment. Do not test a next generation firewall using just a single policy. Enable multiple rules. Enable logging. Visibility is critical because you want to see what is happening on your network in order for you to make that security decision to allow or block an application. One size does not fit all. This is very, very important when you're looking at threat prevention profiles supplied by different vendors. Because, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the type of the profiles, you can have one or many signatures turn on or off. So, to mimic the target deployment, you want to be able to turn on all the signatures so that it gives you the best security coverage without compromising for the performance.